Uh, okay, Vicky, your, your, your first slide, which you just sent me, will come on as soon as the slide moves to the next one. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, and uh, thanks very much, uh, Vicky, for being with us all the way from Thailand and spending this time. Uh, Hi. The unusual part about Vicky is uh, she herself is a second generation sailor. Her parents, her husband's parents, they all uh, sail. So this is actually a third generation family that's sailing. So she has the experience of being a sailor child, uh, as well as uh, Vicky, you have this. What? Just a minute. Yeah. yeah. You see me okay. Both a sailor child, as well as a sailor parent, an extremely successful sailor parent. Vika, her son, has done extremely well at the Iota Asians and is, uh, you know, probably now gunning for the gold in the world. So, Vicky, uh, can you just take on from here? The slide's yours. And I will go on to mute and uh, help you whenever you require. Thanks very much, Vicky, once again. Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me well. So, so uh, let me begin. So, um, actually, anyone can actually um, come in and ask me questions later on after we finish the maybe what we wanted to talk about today. Okay, so um, let begins with uh, what I have on the slide. So we will be talking about parenting competitive sailors. I know that not 100% of you or everyone, uh, parents in India would like their child to go competitively, sailing competitively, but at least, you know, enjoy sailing as a sport. So let me begin my slide. If you, can, can you um, move the slide? Vicky, you become un you, you you need to you need to mute unmute yourself. Oh, again? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't touch anything. Now start. Yeah, you can start now. Okay, start. Um. Uh. So well, let me begin with the first um, picture. I just want to show everyone here. Um. If you can see it, that um, you only praise the people who are actually on a podium. However. A lot of people, actually, a lot of hard work has gone into why they are on a podium in the first place. And even though they, this is like a pyramid kind of uh, scheme here in, in, in all sports, really. And sailing is no different. So if you, to be a competitive sailor, you do have to put in a lot of hard work. And especially in a young generation or in a young kid's. Uh, the parents had to put in extra hard work to, to get the kids up there. However, there are enjoyments that come along with what you can achieve together. And even if you don't gain the podium finishes, you can still enjoy the sport very, very much. Okay, so let me begin the slide, uh, the, the presentation. So if you go to the first slide, Okay, parenting the competitive sailors. I'm not sure what happened on uh, on the screen there, but I hope you can actually read it because on my on the, my my phone is might not be working so well. But um, uh, there are not many competitive uh, sailors around in our region in Thailand as well as India, I suppose. But there are elite sailors and most of those, if you look at their background, is either they're living right on the sea or their parents are sailors. And, and that's one point I want to, to uh, get across is that it doesn't have to be that way. We all, our parents started without, without the parents sailing. So it, it's, it's all about family enjoyment as well. I mean, if your family, your whole family get into um, supporting the sport and the child, then you can actually enjoy the sport together and gain more from it. So if we go to the next slide. 
So what I mean by family sport? So Weka is my son who are who has started sailing uh, competitively when he was nine. He started <clears throat> say, uh, of sailing Optimist when he was um, when he was eight. And if you look back into the uh, the presentation poster, you can see that he actually been around boats since birth. So um, because we all a um, sailing family really on both sides. My husband is also the sailor and he also competed comp comp uh, competitively when he was younger. And so this is our group who we travel together. We have a family from Myanmar, a family from Hong Kong and us from Thailand. So we would go to regattas together as a family where my husband and their fathers would be on board the rib. So we don't really have professional coaches coaching uh, as per se, but more like the father to son coaching. And I do the support on, on shore basically. So it's a family kind of sport enjoyment. So the sailor themselves enjoy much more when parents are around. So even though in a lot of way, you guys are probably dropping off your kids and go sailing. It's a great sport. You know, they're out there doing thinking on their own, et cetera, et cetera. But it, was, it, it is nice to have parents right on shore or nearby or talk about the race or talk about the events that have just been done, even talk about the, the practice itself, really. So if you look to the right picture here, it's basically at our club. So we were testing out the 29er and luckily we have the two kids who are trying to qualify for Olympics to come and help the Weka and, and his friend. And um, so not only the, the, the kids uh, on, uh, to look at the boat, but also the parents. So we have the coach's father, the uh, Weka's father, and also the, his crew's father. They're all getting involved. And parents' involvement within sailing sport is very, very important. So I'm a, I'm a big believer in making sure that your kids get um, everything right before get on the water. So in, there, there will become a time when they know more than you. And yes, you step back, but you can also still help looking for any mist or any anything they might like to change or for example you know their sail tides are not good or something like that but at the beginning for sure I mean if you learn how to sail yourself um, you can help them look for mistakes because adults do get details much much more than kids and when they their equipment do not fail when they get on the water they're happier so I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer in having parents around at practice uh, to help looking at the, the sails and the boats itself. So, and then, you know, if they're not in pain, if they're not, everything goes well as planned, then they enjoy the sport more, basically. So next slide, please. So if you're looking at this, this is at our last world championship in uh, IOTA World Championship in Antigua. You can see how many parents and supporter went with the kids. These are very, very common in Europe, not so much in our region, because I'm not sure um, in a way, uh, sailing is kind of new to Asia. Uh, and then also, I mean, as a recreational sport, of course, but in other part of the world, the parents really have to do all the work. In Asia, we rely so much on clubs and on our government um, organization to help us. But in Europe and other part of the world, they actually have to do it all on their own. So they have to find their own coaches. They have to drive around. So therefore, they very get to get involved. And... And they also enjoy watching because after a while you being involved so much, you enjoy watching the sport. And these are these are people who are sitting there watching team racing, which is to go on a whole day. 
And this is, I think, they are watch, they're waiting for the final to start, which is Thailand against Italy. But, but like I said, you know, it's a, it can be a watching sport as well. So you just need a, a good, strong binoculars and, and then, and then um, you can actually enjoy watching the sport. Okay, so next slide. So get deeper into our topic. So what we will talk about really is, um, first of all, we had to identif identify at this moment, what type of sailor is your child? Of course that you can, your child can be different uh, type as they go on. From the beginning, our family, we just make sure that sailing is sailing for life. It never was uh, sailing for, to be a champion or sailing to be to as a fitness or anything like that for us sailing was is uh sailing for life we we want to our children or well we only have one wake up to really enjoy sailing and make sure he in the sport in for life so first of all you have to really look what type of of um child of sailor your child is going to be or wanting to be, or change the stage when they when they change. So, um, looking back from the experience, right? How did it all started? Right? Different people have different tracks of how it all started, and but whatever how it started, as a child, you if you are around water a lot more, then you started with ease. Um, because they are not scared of water. The sea is a big place. So if they see it a lot, then they'll get used to it more. Um, secondly, mostly they never make a decision on their own to start sailing. 99% um, of time, kids start sailing because their parents bring them. So, or school bring them. No matter how, no, no kids really would walk past the the sailing club and, and walk in and ask to start sailing because it looks difficult. It looks, the equipment is big, everything is set. So once you get started, your child's likely to want to be a recreational sailor more than anything. They want to be able to sail. They want to learn how, they want to get out there and enjoy the sun, enjoy the friends. It's no, no competition will come in, 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 in there at all, in that track until they really get confident on their boat. Therefore, it's a really good idea you don't change boat all the time because then the sailor will never get confident on any boat. So if you, if you stick to one boat long enough, the sailor will get very confident on it. And then that's the time when you see if the track has changed and they want to go competitively and they want to go sailing, racing and so on. So looking back to Weka, how he started was that um, we all sailors, my parents are sailor, Bird's parents are sailor, uh, my husband Bird, and my husband's a sailor competitively and non-competitively, and I'm a sailor too, uh, competitively in national level, as well as um, later on, I did a lot of cruising class. So, so Weka has always been on board the boat you no know, and he but he never really enjoyed sailing by himself until he's about nine so at first when he first started we can never teach him to sail because as parents it's, it's harder to teach your child so it's better to send him to the club with the proper coaching um that way you know uh you learn faster and listen to the coach more I think so when we when we first started he he actually don't like sailing by himself he would cry if the wind picks up and he knows everything because from our his experience with us on board he would be able to tell like it's five knots six knots ten knots so anything more than five knots is too much for him basically but when by we sent him into be coached by this really a uh, great coach national coach before um so get and he then able to bring Weka and out of his shell and started sailing. It was never a competitive sailing um, experience, but then he starts seeing other people racing, and that's how he got into racing 
and that's really hooked him so much because he he um he's into racing a lot so in the second point i want to make so is that when you are um, competition on a competition you want to keep them sailing as well so being a parents it's very important if you if you're not a sailor already you should learn how to sail it just because that once you learn how to sail you can talk to your child more and you have to ask yourself have you sail as a recreational sailor is this what you want or you want to even yourself want to sail competitively even though um, you never sailed before you should always ask those two questions when you start to sailing as well because as an adult um, sail competitively have different level you have a club level and you also have like a national level and for us um, parents we are still a sailor we sail non-competitive and uh, uh, most of the time but at times we do get into our club racing and then you have to talk about are you enjoying the sport because if you tell yourself that you're not enjoying it your child will have a hard time enjoying it and just because that even if you're not a sailor do you enjoy being around the sea because a lot of us Asian, you know, a lot of parents do not want to get into the sun. Therefore, they said they hated the area near the sea to therefore undermining your positive thinking about having your child as a sailor. So first of all, you have to be a sailor parent is, is something in the mindset of your own. So if you're not a sailor, you should try sailing. If you have not tried racing, try one or two times club level. If you not enjoying it, try enjoying it. That's how you get started to be a sailor parent. And I think it's a, a unique experience to be a sailor parent because no parents would really drag themselves to sit around and be in the sun the whole time and enjoy it. But um, all of us, um, you know, try our best. So. Now, uh, keep them, keeping them sailing competitively. So there are a lot of level competitions. So you don't have to really go forward and say, I want to be a national team. I want to be, um, you know, world champions. You have to start from the beginning. At first you said, I want to win my club level first. If you want to be, a, you know, in competition, is club level is a good start. Once you, once you are comfortable in your club level, then you move on to a, a regional level, you know, your country, your nationals and stuff like that. And even if you are not a national sailor, you can still go internationally. Um, well, for us, it's not as difficult because we can actually drive down or go down to Lanka or Singapore and it's not so expensive for us. Um, in your country, it might be a little bit harder with the bigger, you know, your, your region is a lot bigger than us. So internationally as well, it's, um, every time you go international sailing, you learn something more because different regions have different uh, wind pattern and water pattern. So clinic and coaching is another way to get your, your kids enjoying the competitiveness because you have to give them the age. If you don't give them the edge, they don't feel comfortable going into competition because they don't think that they know more than anyone. And, and if by giving them the edge, we're really, we're really um, putting um, some knife, you know, into going into a, a war, right? So some attacking better. And in, in fact, it's nothing to do with other people. It's, it's to do with yourself. Uh, with a child who have an edge on more, if they think they have more knowledge, even though they don't, they probably have the same as everyone else. But even if they think they just came back from a clinic, from special coaching or from some, someone who um, have a lot of experience telling them what to do, then they feel that they actually know more and they're more confident going into the, the competition. And then the lastly is sailor for life. This is very, very important. In our sport, we don't get a lot of um, people staying in the sport, especially when they around the time they go to university. So they, they tend to be off the sport. Um, 
most of the time. So if they actually give um, sailing for life as a as an objective, is is they come back to it, and it would keep everyone enjoying sailing is very important to and they hopefully they'll pass it on to their kids later on and that's more important to our sport than anything is make sure they actually enjoy sailing and continue sailing for a long time so next slides please so let me get back to to um, um i hope that people who are listening are mostly optimist uh, parents or uh, youth parents, because um, this is where it all started. Uh, for us, we started with Optimist because it's the most economical sport. I mean, a boat part of boats. Uh, the boats are cheapest all around to maintain, to buy one. Secondhand is availability is good. Uh, sales, uh, <clears throat> sales last long. And uh, mass and spar also the weight of of each equipment um, last, you, the, your kids will last in it longer. So therefore, Optimist is a, a good economical uh, boat to get into, especially if you are not a sailor before. Um, it's, it looks stable too. So you feel more safe having your child out there sailing. So in Optimist, so what we have is we, two, two things, competitions. So in Optimist, is, uh, it's fun recreationally when you first start it only. Because Optimist is, is something that um, you gain more fun if you compete. Because the kids will get more friendship. Because no Optimist competition is less than 20 boats. Therefore, you get a lot of friends. And that, that's what makes sailing enjoy, enjoyable. Uh, for a lot of kids is friends, especially girls. Girls like to have friends around. So in competitions, you started off with club level. This club level, you should never, never allow your kids to go racing beyond club level in your own group until they're really winning that club level. It just or in a top 10, basically, because then they feel more comfortable going out. Because there's no point of going to the national level and you come last place. It's no fun. No kids enjoy that. But I know there will be a last place, but at least show some ups and downs in racing. I'm talking about different individual race, not the whole regatta, of course. If there's some individual race that they did well, then they enjoy it more. So club level is very important basis to all sailing um, competitively. And you should always keep them um, happy in the club level. If they enjoy coming to the club, they enjoy sailing because kids, um, they're more attached to the actual location than actual boat. So next level is the national level. So in national level, you, you're in your country, I hope um, there, will, there is a competitions. In Thailand, we would have at least about four national level competitions. In our club level, we also have two tiers. We have club members only level where we only have um, kids in our own club. And second tier is we invite other to come and join. Um, in our local competition. And then national level, our club only uh, will do, we have two, two competition, uh, Admiral Cup and Eastern Seaboard. That's when we invite um, overseas people too. So that's national level. And then you have international level. International level in Optimist, you have um, what we call reg regattas. And that is uh, we in ourselves as, um, should, I don't know about other parents, but we ourselves will look at it and divide them up into bronze, silver, and gold. Why is that? Is that in bronze, when you go out international regattas, you, you want to do well. You don't want to go out there because you're coming from overseas. You don't want to go out there and come, you know, last or, you know, being at the back of the fleet. So you started off with bronze or, or if you're a top level sailor you probably started with silver 
because it's always very different out, outside your country. It's much harder harder to gain to gain success. So bronze and silver is is to to start building confidence, and then later on you go to gold. Gold level. Um, these are the the regattas in Europe mostly for us because because um, Europeans have many many regattas and many many sailors. Um, in those in those regattas, there are gold where all the top top sailors go to prepare themselves for IOTA events, and and then um, IOTA events is more elite. These regattas anyone can go, but in IOTA events is where um, only national team selections, um, you know, will get to go. So this one in IOTA events, you have continental, which is different continental. Um, we can join any continental event except Europeans if we want to make the world team. So you either want world or European. And, and to us, um, the steps will be going overseas is to train in goal level fleet and then go on to continental and world. You always have to prepare your kids along the route. So Weka started on, on a bronze level event in a junior fleet. So he was um, cadet, so which is a junior fleet under 12, uh, under, um, sorry, now they change it to be under 11 or under 10 basically. And then after that, you go on to silver level when he started a big fleet. When you start go entering the bigger fleet um, of seniors, you want to start at silver level to make sure that he's in the top ten or top fifteen to make sure that he likes to in, he likes to to compete. And then this past year in 2019, because we know that he's going to make the continental team and the world team, we start him to practice on gold fleet. So gold regatta level that to prepare himself when he goes to world and continental i mean at world and continental level um you might not aim for you know you might aim just to go fleet and so on and stuff because at world is a different different i mean top five from each country comes so to be able to be in a top 10 or top 20 is is really um you are have to be like a hundred percent peak at that time too. So now we look at training for those regattas. So in training, you have a training where you have a club level tra training. These are should be your your basis. You can always fall back on. You always have to be able to go sailing anytime you want. You don't have to, um, you know, wait for anyone to tell you it's time to practice because this club level practice is, is something that you can always go every weekend. And you know, Thai kids, they go every day after school. It's, it's just like swimming. And that's why they're so good. My son don't get that chance. So what we have to do for him is that we would um, do weekends. So Saturday, Sunday, and then on the weekday, we would do one, uh, one or two days a week coming after school um, to Pattaya from Bangkok so that's we would get him in 4 30 until 6 30 basically that's in the summer at least four times a day he gets to sales and and then we we su supplement that with clinics clinics is something that you go and learn new tactics so that you can bring back to your own practice clinics is mostly done by a special coach there, and these coaches are very, very technical. So unless you are at the confident level that you're going to go to your next step of regattas, which is like run to silver, silver to gold, then you don't really go to clinics until you, you really run dries on your drills, basically. After clinics, then you have been selected then that's when you train with the national team. This is mostly because you get most of the um, knowledge from your club level, your clinics already. At national level, these are sparring. You know, uh, sparring is basically having someone who as good train with you. So you can tell the difference of what you need to practice or what skill don't you have. And that's what national level does really. It will not teach you the basic because 
the basic health should have been done in the club level and clinics already. So these are for optimists is the level you go on. And, and I would say you also have a bunch of recreational kids who will never go on competitions in optimists because one, they grow too fast. Kids who grow too fast, then think about this. Every 10 centimeter you grow, you have to change your tax. So therefore, kids who are growing too fast in the first growing years and so on and stuff, it's very hard to get into the top elite fleet because they, they change, um, you have to keep changing their boat handling skills all the time. So a lot of kids in our club do not go competition competitively in Optimus. They would, they would later on do it. So Optimus is something you can choose between never go into competition at all or go sometime at club level or full on if you your kids really into racing go full on and try to drive them to to the national national level but even before they get to national level you can also enjoy the international regattas to to get them more comfortable racing overseas as well as um, we always take a holiday around regattas as well and that way we kind of do both things one for the child and one for the for us as well, um, enjoying the holiday together. So let me say um, what we do uh, in the next slide. So as a supporting parent, right, um, you have to enjoy the sport together, of course. Um, the sport itself cannot be enjoyed if your child is doing it on your own. So we as a parent take it on our own, uh, in our own hands to really make work hard going out there and do the sport. We are not in the position to go with the Federation until he's made the elite team, of course. Therefore, we always have, the first step is do it on your own. So. First of all, um, you have to ask your child first. You want to go for competition. You want to go for recreational, go back to the same slide before, or you just want to sail at the club level, um, competitively, but not so comp competitive, um, not, not so much, basically. We what we do is that Weka have really set his goal. He wants to do school as a basis, um, but for him, school is to make sure it pass basically. And sailing is something he really enjoy. And I mean, it's a time of your life where you can actually do that because as a young child, if you not give them the opportunity to take their goal to the fullest then they or you already set a frame to their life so for us it's like by not by allowing him to to take um only the basic of schooling we can um set higher goals for him he can set higher goals for himself in the sport that he 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 wants and that also teaches you to make sure you go for opportunity and that's what we wanted so when he first said to us that he really likes sailing and really want to do more competitions so we we set sit down together and he set out his goals so um i don't have the example now but in the first year he wrote down all the uh the competition regattas within the, our countries and he would say what he wants to get so he would be in like he would write down top 10 in a junior fleet top uh, 20 in the sea overall fleet and and so on and then that um as the year go by and so now in, in our third year in in the second year he starts saying i want to come first in the junior fleet and they'd be in a top five on the senior fleet for example and now this year it's always like because he's now only in the senior fleet he would only say podium finishes so that's for internal internal competition and then you would set when we'll plan together for the whole year where do you want to go if you want to make the national team to go to world championship then you have to try the place a year before so they usually set up a regattas a year before so you can test the water and so on so if you next year you plan to make the world team 
this year you would already been going to Gada, even though that it didn't happen. But um, but that's the example, basically. Um, so setting goals is very important. So there's no point of just go to any competition without goals. Kids should already have it in their mind, but they're the, the being kids, they would not tell or write it down. So they can do it in secret. They can write it down in secret, but make sure they have it. Make sure they know that they have their goals, why they're going into each competition, right? To make sure they go into the competition and be confident, your equipment has to be good for what competition it is. So for Weka, he is only 35 kg. Therefore, we have to get equipment that is right for his weight. The optimized weight for Optimus is around 43. Most of the equipment, especially shattering equipments, are all 43-based weight. So therefore, you have if your child is heavier, you have to make sure you get better stuff than 43. So you have to find a, a high, uh, you know, stiffer mask, stiffer boom, bigger sails. For example, uh, even our club level, we would buy equipments based on 40 kg because that's what the cheapest and most available. But then you, if you want your child to do well in competition, you have to fit them with the good equipment to make sure that they are confident in when they go in. And the th third thing is financial. We do it on our own because we're lucky to, to be able to do it. However, if you, if you are not then you should um, also set goal base on your within within your financial level, and 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 I mean there are many many different level of competitions in in different financial situation. So and I mean clubs and and national level probably give some funding and stuff. If you if you find a way, there 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 always. Um, good chances that your child will get more competition out of it. So next is uh, go with the federation. Um, once the thing is that each country has their own politics. And to be fair, um, you have to learn to live with it. You, you can go on your own, but, but you won't make the national team. You have to make sure you trusting the system that they will do a fair selection and there's no point of getting into their politics. So you just like, okay, if they're going to have selection on in June, then you train towards June. So you have to trust the trusting the system that they will have a fair selection, and you just go for it. And 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 that's all you need to care about. You don't need to be worried about what behind the scenes. So that's just a waste of time. Extra training before going into competition with the federation or you know, test selection is something very important. So, I mean, if you're really into the sport um, competition level, you have to, you may miss the school. For some, for, for, for sure, like for my son, he studied international school. He have to miss school because most of the competitions and training and clinics and extra trainings by federation is based on school holiday within the country. So the Thai kids can do it. Therefore, we, we, we have to sacrifice the school time for extra training if we want to make the team. But that's what we have to do. Our school, international school especially, are much more flexible. So they're able to give us online from, from the beginning to support this uh, ventures since two years ago. So we're really lucky that we have the school support. But, but we did have to um to to go go forward with um uh, you know so let me finish up with uh with the uh, it has to be clear before you go into national level is the objectives of the sport itself so you make sure that your kids know really well why they're training towards a national level it's not because you want to get to the national team and that's it for us we can't want to get to the national team so he can get that world level world um title so don't go in with just uh, uh just make a national team basically so you have to make a big picture of the objectives with your child as well so 
let's get into conclusions. After all this, we just want to, I just want to say that um, I think our time is running short. Um, so we want to make sure that you understand that sailing is about friendship and fun. So you want to get your child to enjoy it as much as they can. It's not about competition only, but there are level of competitions to make them stay in the sport. Sport without competition would just be boring to any kids. And, and, and that's not true when they said, oh, my child doesn't want to do racing. It's not true because your every child wants to do some racing to, to, to at least make friends. So that's how um, they will stay in the sport longer is to allow them to enjoy the level of competition that is right for them. So let's, um, shall we go into uh, next slides and then uh, questions? So this is a, a photo from the parade of the World Championship. So you can see now that now, I mean, if you get a chance to go to that level, you would make so many friends from around the world and that's more important than, than anything. So you, do you have a list of questions for me? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. questions coming up. The um, for those of you who don't know, Wiki is uh, pretty much on the Optimus circuit around the world. She's pretty much uh, uh, every sailor's favorite parent, I think, and everyone goes to her when they need help. So uh, she started sailing at the age of eight, and uh, she made it to the Thai team for the European Championships and the Asian Championships. She was also the laser radial national champion in um, Thailand. First question for you, uh, Wiki, is uh, can you just describe the finest moment uh, you had as a parent? Um, to me, is is the smiles he he gets every time he come out of the water, not just in competition, but in every training. In fact, you know, he always talk about you know, what he learned today on water and never without fail, he would have something to talk about when he get on and off the water once he get on and off. We've lost your video, Wiki, so... Okay, sorry, it's back. Okay, right. so the, the smile is what you look forward to and that's, those are the finest moments So that. It's not just a moment, uh, uh, you yes. are, uh, you know, happy pretty much every time he comes back from the sale. Can you describe one of the most difficult moments you've had as a parent? Um, the difficult moment is when he, you know what, with, with Wei Kai is kind of different because he, he's a self-motivator. He's a great um, child in terms of like, he would fix his own problem. He would come out very disappointed, but within like half an hour, he would be okay because he, he, he set it up in his mind that, um, you know, he, he, what he did well. So positive thinking is something that he always has. So with a difficult moment is to give him that time, that space. He, he, would, he doesn't want to talk to anyone, really. He come out, he would be in the mood, but that, that helps with sailing because you have time to clean up your boats and stuff like that to, to clear out your mind as well. And, 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 and for us, is that um, for him, is, is the difficult moment is, um, is not be able to share that experience on why he doesn't do, uh, why he, he doesn't feel good about himself. But, but because he always do it himself, you know, he, he cleared out him himself. He already know what he has to do next time, basically. This whole process of internalization where he comes back to shore and fixes it himself, as you say, is it something that you trained him to do? Is it something that you or, and your husband have? Or is it something? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think he's better than any of us. He's, um, the thing is, um, I think because we go into sailing um, very positive positively because we never really push him towards anything he he pushes himself therefore sailing is is a like i said he go in as a, a, a sport for life right sailing for life therefore he is never fail or not fail he always not happy with his performance along the way not so much the results he never really disappointed with what he comes in at the end He's disappointed that he didn't cover that well. He didn't start well, or he, he didn't do well all along the way, rather than the, the result itself. So it, and we never really concentrate on the result either. So we always looking, um, what improvement can you do 
or what what would have you done differently if we come back and look at the video or track track or something if we have those or when we're watching it because they know he he knows we're watching he can always reflect the questions like what do you think where should i start you know that kind of thing so so it, it's actually it's a process rather than a what who taught him really uh, suraika can you uh, tell harish to please stop uh, sharing the presentation who yes yes, sir. yes yes sir it's done okay um uh, you were a, you, you know you were a sailor your uh, in your time you had your parents uh, definitely helped you and taught you and served as guides and mentors to you uh, what have you learned from your parents which you're implementing on your child as a generational transition and uh, the other thing is what have you learned not to do as a consequence of being a, 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 you know a child yourself which you have improved and are implementing on wake up uh for me um my parent my my father is a sailor so for me it was it was easy to get get into sailing because we already have a sailing club we don't have to make many choices for where we car would sail or where he would start sailing of course so he, he it's it's easier path for us however um what have he done that i would um actually you know what for me it, everything seemed to be quite okay because i'm a recreational sailor i'm only part time competition i don't do so much um competition i only make the team back in the days think about it back in the 1980s you don't really have much of the optimist team so any any good sailor basically get into a team because <laughs> because we don't have a lot of girl sailor and then ayoda started to have a quota for girls as well so it was easy for me for my husband also um his father is a great sailor um my husband uh, father went to olympics and also won asian asian medals uh, right asian games medal so it was a different track altogether he, they were really into competitions um and his father probably wanted him to do well and he and by doing well he also gets scholarship to university and so on so it was it was a different tracks but um we both enjoy sailing so we met each other in uh, regattas so it was good um so so it was if um, what we we don't want our son to be is um to stop sailing basically we don't mind he stop competition but He, at least he come to the club and enjoy whatever class he he would and then that's the thing my my father never pushed me to 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 sail on any boats and and we would never push we car to sail on any boat we would guide him on to what boats available but we wouldn't we wouldn't be pushing and and that's what keep kids sailing is that be able to sail anything really when they grow up mm. um What advice would you give sailors who cannot afford the sport? What solutions do you have in Thailand for sailors who cannot afford the sport? Um for us it's different. Um we we our own club is different. We 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 are a private club where we we everyone's pay for the membership. However, in um in our federations or our association, they would have the um a clinic open for very very cheap price. And once you get into the clinics um once they uh, the, if the kids want to continue sailing they can apply to become um one of the sailors um that but then a certain commitment have to be be done and uh, for example they have to sail uh, at least four times five times a week it's almost like swimming you know and the the equipments are all free so with other clubs around the country as well it's run by sponsors so we we do have about 30 i mean um optimist association ourselves we i mean academy ourselves we have boats in phuket where we set up for them uh with 20 30 boats and also in prajuap in songkla you know in other part of the countries we 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 uh the uh wirat so uh, yacht racing association of thailand would give out all second hand boats to to those clubs as well so they get equipment for free and the coaches are normally a local people who are willing to teach so these are uh, sport lover really to get it going 
Uh, yeah. So it's uh, if you it, when in you when you in Thailand you you have those four to start sailing, but if your parents are not uh, into sailing, and drop the kids off, those kids will not last in sailing. It just because the parents are not getting involved at all. Yeah. So um, somewhere in the middle, you mentioned something about making the sailor or the child feel that they've got the edge. Can you just explain that, how you make the child feel that they've got an edge? Um, I think extra training. So you have a club level training, right? And then you you would be able, if you can get that um, special clinics or special coaching, even from YouTube and stuff, is it between you and your child, your parents finding it for you or a book or something. So if they think that they actually have something going to competition with more knowledge, even the weather pattern, you know, every time we go to a regatta, we would be talking to some local fishermen and ask them, you know, how's the weather work? Because that's the edge the local have on us. But if the child knows that he knows just as well, then he have the edge and he's going into competition knowing that I also know kind of thing. How do you so, uh, strike a balance between uh, an academic career and uh, a sailing career? So for us, it's, it's different because our Waker School is international school and they're very supportive of sports. When he makes a national team, he have to go training and so on, or he would, they would actually put him online work. But I'm saying that at this level, your child's not going to be a doctor. You know what I mean? So, so there's no point of be pushing so hard academically and not enjoying the life. Of, and what sailing can give your child is the enjoyment of life. They teaches you how to think as well when you're out there, learning the environment. And one really important thing is to really learn how to set goals and how to reach that goals, how to work our competitions, um, our objectives, and so on. And that's what school do not teach. The school teaches the curriculum of follow, right? You have to learn something that the teachers tell you. But in sailing, it's different. You actually have to learn from whatever available around you. Um, this so is so that's fine. Kind of, um, uh, over parenting or helicopter parenting, and then you have this uh, coaches sometimes over coach. I mean, they they, they kind of uh, tend to uh, not really wait for the child to pick up a couple of nuances on their own. Uh, any thoughts on that in terms of over parenting or helicopter parenting and? Anything, any thoughts on overcoaching? Well, there is no level of parenting is, is, is for, right for anyone because some child want to be overparenting. Some child do not want parents around so much. But for one thing in sailing is that if you're not a sailor, you can't be overparenting because you really don't know what sailing is all about until you really learn to sail and really know what the child's getting into that's when you can start talking about sailing. And that's edged um, is also there for, if you look at the elite kids of sailors, a lot of them have parent sales. It's just because they talk about sailing the whole time. And, and to get into that position, you do have to start at least one or two clinics of your own to learn how to sail. So you actually learn as well. And that way you can learn together with your child opening up some YouTube and talk about sailing together. And those are kind of parenting um, in sailing that to, to get them good. And also over parenting, what is it? Protectiveness. You wouldn't be putting, you don't want to put your child into sailing if you want to be over protection because your child is out there by themselves in the sea. And that's kind of also help with the P teach, help teaches parents who are over protective as well, because you have to let your child go out there for our five hours to train by themselves and so on. Um, regarding coaching, we don't know so much about this one because we are not a coach. However, my, my husband coaches Weka himself in the void that we don't have the coaches available. So what he does is that he brings out what he knows um, and he reads a lot on the internet and on the books and he brings those to teach your child. So by, by saying over coaching, 
you, if being a father or a mother, you would know your child really well and you would want to tell your, your club coach first that these are the level that my child wants to be. So the club coach also know how to push your child as well. Um, but then that is the decision of the child will make. And a good coach is when they make that decision together um, instead of having a parent tell them exactly what to do. But to start it off with, a child of eight years old, nine years old, they wouldn't know really um, what level they want to be. They just want to go out, enjoy sailing. That's why you have to introduce them slowly to racing and see if they like it or not. How would you shield your child from um, uh, politics, um, you know, intercoach between a, a parent and coach and other politics within the interparent politics and the federation politics? <laughs> with Weka, um, we don't, the thing is with us, we are so much on our own uh, in a lot of competitions. Um, we only involve with the association in level of national level, if you make the team. Before that, or in between that, is all on our own, right? So with Weka, he doesn't really get involved. He once he's in the team, he's in the team. Um, with us, we we know exactly what we wanted. Um, when Weka said, when Weka's in the team, we want to make sure he train um, enough to make sure that he's not a burden to that team as well. And I know that with his timetable of school, as well as other things, he cannot be in where the training is because their training is um, three hours from Bangkok. We can't come every day like other child. So we had to work with the coach early in, in early enough to say that we're only going to be there in the weekends, for example. So if everything, if you open and straight off talk about this, you know, then it's clear on everyone's mind on where, where you want to be. So with politics, um, we can get around it by, by being very clear to each other. If your child is good enough to be in a team, they know that what you have done beforehand is good enough to make a competition, right? So therefore, therefore it, it can be worked out between, between the coaches and the, the national coach and us on what to do and, and so on. Um, Optimus is not, um, because we're not involved or around those areas so much. So we don't really get to see those um, parents um, that really into this and that because also where we're not into um, using the club uh, boats or the boats of that belong to the federation, we, we always get our own. So we, we don't have the issue of why my child getting older boats and why while he, he getting better boats and stuff. But in sailing, uh, you have to know that the better sailors get better equipment in, in Federation. But that's very fair because, you know, they wouldn't get there to be a good sailor in the first place. Everybody start from the beginning. Everybody start from the older stuff anyway, until your child get good. And then everybody have different, different level of talents. If you want to be involved in that, from the beginning, then you get to federation and ask your child to be part of their, their um, program. But for us, it's different. We, at the club level, we enjoy on our own and then we go send him there for selection only. So. Thanks very much, Vicky. That was a lovely presentation and I'm sure lots of the parents would have learned a lot from your experiences and hope to meet you at many regattas. For the record, it's important that uh, everybody knows that her son, Vika, Little fellow, I, we, the Indian team, uh, when we went to Oman, we met him there and he performed brilliantly. He came second at the uh, Iota Asians and then he, after that, he also won the uh, Asian uh, Championships in, he was second at the Asian Championships in Thailand. So, and first at team racing. So, fantastic performance uh, by Vika and I'm sure more, many more performances like that to come. Thanks, Vicky. Oh, thank you, thank you. Bye, everyone. Hope to see you as soon as possible, as soon as COVID lifts up. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. For those who are still around, day after tomorrow, we're going to have um, uh, a sports psychologist talk to us. Um, 
and her name is Mubda, and she will be coming on uh, Mubda Barave, and she will be coming on uh, at ten o'clock on 